coming to you from UBN Studios in Burbank, California. You're listening to the Unsugarcoated Podcast with your hosts, Ali Alanius and Alexandra Cheka. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unsugarcoated Podcast. We're so happy to have you. I'm Alia. I'm Alex. And they you? know my name already. <laughs> Hopefully. You can't forget this voice. Right. Hello. Um, how's your week been? My week has been... Your week or your week? <laughs> Honestly, this... Uh, this is the thing of? about speaking, speaking Spanish. I just don't know how to <laughs> speak sometimes. My week has been, no, that, then that sounds like a week, <laughs> right? Oh, God. <laughs> my week ha- Oh, my God. Okay. You know what? Everything is great. Why don't you tell me about yours? <laughs> well, I mean, it's been good. It hasn't been that rough, but uh, <laughs> it's been good. Actually, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because... Um, you know, one of the things that I had, we talked about earlier as I read this article on what happened with the um, Miss Universe, uh, Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans Miss Universe, uh, and how there's kind of been this um, opinion that she is too white to be representing Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is a very, this was very sensitive to us because I think that, first of all, we're all living in a world where we're very mixed. People are, we're just, we're just so many things yeah. quite often, right? And what you look at is not often what it's it is. It's hard to pinpoint where you are. Absolutely. From. And I get all the time the look of like, so where are you from? And I'm like, California. And they're like, no, no, like, where are you not from? Not really. And, you know, yeah, we've been. Yeah. And so you get that all the time. And then what's more shocking is when people look at you like they don't believe you. My one of my daughters uh, looks so much like my grandfather, blonde hair, blue eyes. And then, you know, it's she goes to school where there's like a lot of brown girls. There's brown people. Yeah. There's diversity. And they assume she's not diverse because she looks this way. But she's like, no, I'm. I'm Arab and I'm mixed and I'm this and I'm that and then they're like, oh really? Whoa, okay, we didn't we didn't know that. We just presumed you were a white girl. They haven't told her something like, oh, you're actually really pretty for an Arab girl. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> that's coming. No, all the Arab. Sure. No, um, I'm sorry. All the Arabs are too busy making a big deal about the fact that she's so light right. hair and light. Oh my eyes. God! So she can't win. Right. Anyway. Yeah. No. Oh. No. No. Which is totally pro- like my growing up. I grew up with like the fair side of my family. And I was always told how pretty I would be mm-hmm. if I had my grandfather's blue eyes. Wow. I was told, you know, yeah. That's it's so, so mean. right. And I mean they loved they they loved me, but it was very interesting the way that I was spoken to as a young girl. And obviously I, it messed with my head a bit because I thought, you know, right here, they didn't I knew they didn't like my father, so they'd always tell me how much I look like my father. Oh, I'm like, so nice. wait, what does that mean? And um, my brother, who took after the more fair side of between us, they would always be like, "Oh, he's your daughter's. You look, or your your boys look so cute." And they're like, "Oh no, that one's a girl." It's referring to me. Like I would get mis- I would get confused for a boy. <laughs> <sighs> what? Yeah, I mean, it really. So you know. So that was Alia's childhood. That was my. It was both <laughs> wonderful and horrible at the same yeah. time. And yeah, it was. So when I read a story like that, yeah. it was very. I mean, look, who remembers from Selena when she was like or in the movie when she, you know Jennifer uh, Lopez, Lopez was playing her role and she's and they were talking about how like you can't win. You know, you go to Mexico and you're not Mexican enough because you don't right. speak Spanish. But then in America, you're not white because you're, you're not, not you're not you're not white enough. Like you're kind of so. It was very interesting and heartbreaking for me to see what she was going through. Um, Madison Anderson Berrios is her name, her last name, her, but she doesn't actually use it, and how they just kind of felt she wasn't properly representing. And that was just kind of a shock to me. It was, it's a shock, especially because just because she doesn't speak Spanish and she doesn't, you know, she's, she has blonde hair and she's sure. not, she might not be as curvy as the quote-unquote Puerto Rican girls are. Right. Are known to be, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't make her any less of it, right? Like, that's the thing. I mean, if you are Mexican, but you don't speak Spanish, and of course, we're in California, we have a lot of that. I have a lot of friends who I actually speak Spanish from being here in this country, in this this state for so long, and having so many friends who spoke Spanish that when I, I, but I have friends who I'm like, oh, you're, oh, you're Mexican, and it's like, I'll say something in Spanish, and they're like, yeah, but I don't speak Spanish, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so then you're not, right, right. But like I told you yesterday, so um, and I'm so glad that you sent me this article. Every time, uh, because I have lived in Peru for, for 10 years of my life, I have experienced more racism from non-white people. Right, right. And if you have friends that are Indian or like Nepalese, you know their parents would literally lose their shit if you bring a white boy home. 
Right. Because you need to marry a ne- like a Nepalese guy, an Indian guy. And it's it's like, wait a minute. You're the one here talking about like all these races, all these racism, but you don't like you wouldn't allow your daughter to marry someone who's not from your race. But I think that speaks to the underlying issue that racism is not something that just exists within the white culture. And funny enough, right. because I've written my last book, Yogan, which kind of take, does <clears throat> take an attack on white supremacy, that that's my yeah. position. And I'm like, no, that's not my position. That's just one part of it. But being part of the Middle Eastern culture, it's very funny. In about several years ago, uh, you could go online and look at the newspapers in UAE, and a lot of UAE has a high uh, quantity population of expatriates. People go there because there's money to uh-huh. work and they can get their jobs, right? And so you have a lot of Indian, um, uh, and it would be trip me out because I would see um, like a matchmaker or parent families putting ads in the paper in the section for like betrothals or whatever wow. and they would say like we want a tall girl she needs to be light she, you know we prefer her to have you know this that and the other be educated but then be this and you know thin mm-hmm. like they would give like measurements almost mm-hmm. and it was super crazy because that is you know within that culture i could see what they were doing they wanted the lighter prettier like you're kind of you, you do this and so anyways it's just very you know it's something to think about because we are responsible for what we teach our families i think as women we are the matriarchs of our family yeah and, um, you know, maybe we should really reconsider that because we are coming to a time, even myself, I kind of definitely do that now where I'm like, people are like, I'm like, I'm multicultural. What are you? I'm not, you know, like if you really run a DNA, I mean, I may love yeah. my certain parts of me, but I mean, even my family from the Middle East in like, you know, Greece and all that, there's so much there. I am just multicultural. I know mm-hmm. I'm not one thing and I embrace all parts of me. Yeah. And I think that other people might want to look to do the same and, and be accepting of others. That's know? what, but that's what makes you accepting of others when you realize that you're not one thing right right and I feel kind of spoiled by that I know some people are like well then that's you know I mean look my mother my mother my biological mother married somebody who he wasn't mixed um, actually my stepfather had a black stepfather and his mother remarried a black man and this was so my I mean, this would have been in the 50s and mm-hmm. you know that was a very difficult time in LA for a white woman to marry, to marry a black, a black man. man oh my god and Trust. so he has two half sisters that are part black and i really this is going to say like i mean i know people are like why are you talking about your mom like this but i really you just remember something to every parent out there your children hear you and even as, an, as a young woman when she pointed out like their family reunion i guess they had a family reunion she said well look do you see how now that she married a black guy the side of the picture is all black and i was really shocked i was yeah. like as a kid i thought how and I'm not trying to paint her as a horrible person, but anybody who knows me, I mean, look, nobody's perfect. And I'm not saying, I'm not holding my, my biological mother to some perfection standard, but that was something she did. That was something she said. And even me as a parent in this day and age, I take responsibility for the things that I say in mm-hmm. front of my family and in front of my children. Yeah. And that was something that was really, as an, as a, you know, as an observer, it was pretty, it was yeah. pretty interesting. So anyway, so, so on top of this conversation, we're, we have a guest who's really <coughs> going to help us kind of like, we, we're going to talk some more about this and oh, we're, we're very excited. Talk yeah. about a lot of things. Hey girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Lee is a speaker, motivator, former pageant queen, grad school dropout and founder of four multi-million dollar e-commerce brands. At 23, she founded her first company, Lady Boss Glasses, to be followed by two additional eyewear companies and a women's wellness brand called Live Jiva. At 25 years old, she's now an internationally known eight-figure entrepreneur. Lauren's brands are regularly featured on E! News, OWN, MSNBC, Fox Business, and you might even catch a glimpse of them on billboards in Times Square. Lauren has worked along superstar entrepreneurs like Kevin Harrington from ABC's Shark Tank and is now passing along what she's learned through her coaching lectures and online courses on her learning platform, Money Bunny. Welcome, Lauren Lee. You have like the whitest of the white girl following up this conversation on race, so <laughs> hopefully I don't just spoil it. <laughs> no, no, I mean I think that that's what. So you know, like obviously our our, our video, our visual watchers audience will have the pleasure of seeing you know your beautiful <laughs> young woman. You are so are you now twenty five? Yes. Okay, so yes. you're twenty five. Uh, but I think that that's what's actually what will kind of like balance out why I was excited to bring you on following this conversation because it's something that we deal with now yes you have a unique look though how often do you get asked 
where are you from? Well, you know, it's so funny because um, my sister and I, so we're both from the same parents, right? But she actually has this beautiful, dark olive skin tone, has darker hair. She has like these beautiful Italian features. My family's Italian. Whereas I got the pasty white skin, <laughs> <laughs> like no interesting features. So I just feel true. like I'm just, <laughs> I know, you know right? the I'm regular like, white girl. But my sister has all these beautiful features. So she actually is the one who always gets asked these questions. And she was joking with me because, um, her first year at UCLA, she called me up and she was like, Lauren, the Jewish sororities are trying to like recruit me like crazy. And then like, you know, all these different ethnic groups were kind of thinking that they belong, that she belonged to them. Right. So, right. Yeah. so that's kind of kind of the joke. I'm just boring and, and no one ever cares. So. <laughs> no, but you know, for asking. I feel included now. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's actually a very interesting part of the conversation because, you know, my daughter, like I said, she's one. I have four kids. The other ones, well, except for Sophia, who looks like her dad, but she's got, oh, she doesn't have the blue eyes. She's got so. green eyes and she, but she's, she's a white. It's so funny when people sometimes, I, somebody one time after she was and said she looks just like Mira and I said that's because they both look white but you know and I was just and I wasn't trying to be silly but it's true you know people will just kind of be like they have these whitish features so they look alike right whereas my other two children they're brown they're they're more the brown the olive skin the brown hair brown eyes like myself and they don't look like their sister I mean they're looking like it, it, especially the two that the um that have the same parents like you right, said right so my question to you though and see I always felt odd when I was younger as the not white girl it took me a long time to say, you know what, Alia, you actually kind of look exotic. I didn't. People would say you have right. this exotic look. I right. didn't. I didn't accept it. I'm like, mm -hmm. you're tripping. First of all, like <laughs> me and exotic in the same sentence. That was like my low self esteem telling me that. Yeah. How do you, you know, because we always think that the grass is like girls with straight hair want curly hair. I mean, oh yeah. Oh my you, gosh, of course. You're never happy with what you have. Oh my goodness, let me tell you a story. So we're talking a little bit about pageants and all that too, right? So it's so interesting because um, I. I did pageants a couple of years ago, and when I started competing, the blonde hair was just not good enough for me. I was like, I have to look like Megan Fox. So I dyed my hair. My hair was black. I, like, drew on these black eyebrows. I was, like, so, you know, just totally excited to look, like, dark and, you know, all this stuff. And I, I totally wasn't. I was layering on spray tans like crazy and just trying to look like someone I, I really wasn't. And um, yeah, I think for it, it doesn't matter what your background is or where you're from. We always try to look different than right. who we really are. We think that that's the standard of beauty. And I think that's a good question to ask ourselves. Why is the standard of beauty always something that we're not? Yeah. Why can't we Why can't we be okay with ourselves setting our own standard of beauty? So that's true. Yeah, that's kind of well, been my think, personal journey. I as think well. a lot of that goes into what we were talking about, like what our parents like. We, oh you know, my gosh. Like gosh. my grandmother was an amazing woman. I love her to death. Um, but she told me things like, if you grow up and gain weight, your husband is going to probably cheat on you. Because, mm -hmm. like, it, suddenly the responsibility was placed on me mm -hmm. that, like, if I don't look a certain way, you know, she would even say, don't dare go out of the house without makeup on. Like, sometimes, that's why I love when you leave the house, you know, without makeup. You're like, awesome, you don't care, I don't care, yeah. you know. How do you... You know, I mean, like, we have to teach our young women to really embrace themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's really cool that we have. Because when I was growing up, we really don't have that. Right. Yeah. So right. let's let's get into, like, what you do now. Like, yeah. you build brands. Yes. Like yes. crazy. <laughs> tell us, well, tell us about your super traditional path, you know, and then kind of that the going thing. through the really non-traditional. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. I never thought I would be here. Um, I didn't ever kind of set out to be... Um, an entrepreneur or a businesswoman at all. I actually thought I was going to go into politics and I was raised in a very conservative household. I did speech and debate. I was trained mm -hmm. to, you know, give an answer for everything you believe and have all of your facts lined up. So I was like, maybe a lawyer, maybe politics, something right. like that. And so I went to a um, a pretty conservative school out, <laughs> pretty conservative, like the most conservative school. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> let's not get ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to ease this in here. But no, it was extremely conservative um, on the East Coast, just outside of D.C., called Patrick Henry College. And um, their entire mission is to change the culture towards more conservative values. So that was what I thought was going to be my future. I just thought, okay, I'm going to embrace what I do well, which at the time was speaking and I would do like I would I was on the debate team in college as well and got to represent the United States in India for the world championships and all oh, sorts wow. of really cool things but I was I was just kind of following this path that I thought was set out for me and um, I graduated in 2016 and I was extremely disillusioned by politics <laughs> at that time oh, wow. for a variety of reasons but mostly just because I saw so much contention 
even within the side that I thought agreed with each other. There were so many Republicans at my school, but then they would get in these huge brawls and fights over literally whether or not they were going to vote for Trump. And it wasn't even a Republican versus Democrat thing anymore. It was right. person against person. And I really hated that. I hated how one person could label someone else as a horrible human being simply because they were going to vote for a Democrat. You know, right. it, it was very oh, difficult wow. for me um, to see um, just the erosion of respect and um in a culture that i had always felt very respected in um and that i always had a lot of respect for other people i suddenly right. was losing that so i um i worked for about a year after college at a nonprofit law firm and i was going into dc quite a bit just doing my job i would i would talk with politicians and further my causes and all of that but i just um i really finally felt like you know what i um I deserve to set some of my own goalposts and not always be the one backing up maybe an agenda I don't completely agree with. Right. Um, and so I kind of just set out on my own <laughs> and decided, you know what? There are 11 and 12 year olds making millions of dollars right. off of the internet right now. I have no excuse. Time yes. to get to work. Let's figure out what they're doing. And now we're here, which yeah. is really exciting. I mean, my daughter watches Ryan. And I, we went to Target recently, and she got, like, the little stuffed animal and the blanket. Now, as a business person, I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, how the hell? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I come from, I, so I had my first company, my first business I had launched at 25 years old. And I was, like, you a young entrepreneur. Right. Um, different situations that led me down that road. But, um my day of marketing was getting getting going down to Pip's printing or you know whatever your printer was getting a massive box of flyers that you had designed and go put them on cars or go hand them out and like it's funny because I still do some of that like grassroots type of marketing when I'm doing things but I, I don't have a problem with it but it's very interesting how I was just telling somebody if I would have had social media Back yeah. when I was 25, oh, Way I would easier. be in a whole different level right now. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm on a good over. level, don't yeah. get me wrong, but I mean, I would be on a whole different level. Oh my gosh, it's you know? completely different now. I mean, there is, there's so many advantages that are literally available to anybody with a phone. I mean, you can become a millionaire off of your phone. Right, right. Um, I didn't even, I didn't even have my laptop at the time when my businesses took off. I literally was making all of this money from a phone and a small iPad. Right. And so it just blows my mind that that's the era we live in. It's completely sure. kind of this new landscape. Yeah, I and I have to share with you something really quick to back up because I actually love what you said about, you know, I, first of all, I'm from a conservative background, very fam very conservative. And I'm like you, and I think that kind of go going into what we're all seeing, I just want whoever, I, I've always wanted the person who's leading our country to, care about this country and need mm. and I felt like I felt I I'm not, and this is not a political show so we're not like going into that but I mean one thing I would agree with you on like for me it's been if I don't believe what you believe as a conservative then suddenly you're putting me in some other category that I don't belong right. in because I don't fit there and that's and, you, and I feel it's very unfair completely and like oh, mad girl, you know, I like feel whoa you. stop I so it's very you. interesting that you say that because mm -hmm. you get a lot of like you know okay boomers and this whole concept and yeah. I hear what you're saying and I relate to it a hundred percent so it's right. like it's very, you know, it's very like, you know, I do believe in the forward progression of things within our world that make the world a better place for all of us, not just one particular group of individuals. And so it's very refreshing to hear you say that, I have oh, to say. I couldn't agree with you more. I, honestly, I, I feel like the reason this entrepreneurial path has been so helpful for me is because I don't feel like I fit into any particular box. And that was making people around me angry at me. Sure. And it was almost like a sense of panic because I was like, well, I can't get, I, I can't let these people who I've known all my life be upset with me. But then I kind of don't believe that anymore. Or I'm starting to come into my own in this other area. And right. Then, you know, you're losing friends and gaining friends and losing them. And I, I all because of these labels. Yeah. And so um, I think just having a little bit more power now over my life and over my own value system and all of that it's been you know kind of like I'm growing up with my brands right. and it's taught me so much to be able to just have a deeper level of self-control I feel like you know it's like it's helping me so you feel like you can be more of yourself yes without the yes the backlash I, of absolutely yes. of posting something that you're not supposed to post right or yeah. posting something can I, on I'm gonna be really Facebook. honest with you guys to this day 
and this is a true untrue. I to this day cannot post a picture of myself in a bathing suit on Instagram because of the way that I was raised. It's just uh. now what's funny <laughs> is people will be like, "Oh, you have no, no, no. You guys don't right. understand." Like I, st- I'm actually very. I have my life. I'm very happy, and that I talk a lot about that. I came into mm-hmm. my own. I got from underneath a lot of the beliefs that and learned to to mm-hmm. to break free from them. Hallelujah. But it's interesting how there's still certain parts of me, and I. And I'm not going to say I like them, mm-hmm. but I'm not mad at that part of me. And I just don't want some like that doesn't mean that I'm judging anyone else for doing it. But I'm saying like that's just how I feel about it. So that's OK. Right. Like to take ownership of how you feel. But it's very interesting because. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, obviously, totally. I, I was coming from a place of um, like if you're working at a firm. You do not want to post the picture right. in the bikini. Well, on did you see Instagram. what happened to that one girl who she applied for the job and then they went on her? Sto- they I on saw that. they Instagram. shamed her crazy. Crazy. Like, really? on Instagram crazy. because she was in Vegas in a bathing suit. Which I mean, if a guy had applied and, and we all know guys have pictures of themselves in a, in right. a there's plenty of guys with pictures of themselves in their shorts in a freaking pool in Vegas, right? And then yet this woman was getting shamed for it. So exactly those things that it's like, yeah, I'm still aware that it's funny. We should be able to live our lives the way we want and be who we want without mm-hmm. freaking recourse or fear of any repercussion and backlash and though there's parts of me that have grown it's ironic and then, you know maybe it's because I have daughters I also have daughters and mm-hmm. like it, that's just being fair like once you have daughters, you're like okay don't do this and then I've always believed like I'm not going to be like my family where they told me things but then they did something different like right. I'm going to be the person who walked the walk and talks the talk mm-hmm. right and, and let me tell you it goes the other way too so you mentioned oh this girl was getting shamed for wearing a bathing suit I mean, it goes the opposite way as well. I have uh, one of my employees for one of my, one of the first brands I ever started, um, lives in Iraq. She's an American. Mm-hmm. She got married. She moved overseas, and um, she is a Muslim. So she wears the traditional Muslim garb from head to toe. And uh, well, wait, she you mean the burqa? Yes. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's not traditional. Ah. That's very specific to them. So I'm Muslim, and you hijab is traditional. A burqa is hijab. not. Okay. That's more on the more, like, you know how just in the conservative realm there's, like, the right. the snake dancers, and you have, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I mm-hmm. went to Bible school. I hold a degree in biblical studies, I know, and I'm like, but, but yes, so just so you know, that's, yes, yeah. Yes, no, that's Sorry. good to but know. Anyway. See, white girl coming in here and needing <laughs> no, some no, education. No. But um, she she asked me because I, I told her, I said, I'm so impressed with the work that you've been doing for this company. I mean, this girl started out low level customer service she's now my right hand woman Mm -hmm. I mean she's incredible and she um I said I I want our followers on Instagram for one of these brands I'm like I want them to know who's posting all the time and who's talking like feel free to introduce yourself and and she was so hesitant she's like you know well a lot of people are gonna have a negative reaction so I just want you to know that and I don't want to I don't want to post anything if if you're you're not completely comfortable with that right and at that point I I really did have to make a decision because you are either going to lose sales over people's prejudices or you have to confront your own morality and your own values right. and take a stand and step into something bigger a bigger discussion um I told her girl get on the gram <laughs> right <laughs> right take some videos you, yeah you yourself. can I mean yeah I'm I mean, a Muslim and yes, I know and, and by the way crazy. I obviously I'm in that I'm in a realm of Muslim women who don't do always what I'm supposed to do and I say well guess what my walk with God is none of your business and thank goodness exactly. anything that I do mm-hmm. you're not responsible she for she still loves so, me oh my gosh you know, absolutely like as absolutely. a Muslim woman I feel it's important to represent that and and also show that you can be in the middle you don't have to be this one thing and you can still yes. be you know like one thing that my grandmother did teach me and I'm very thankful she says you can be beautiful sexy and classy at the same time there's just you know and that was always my focus and Mm -hmm. and i and i think it's okay for a woman no matter what your religion is to freaking want to feel sexy and feel good about yourself oh absolutely no matter what your religion is i feel like yeah i mean as a christian i i find it just amazing because there's so many stereotypes of okay what is a muslim woman or what is her outlook on life or whatnot and as a woman who employs muslim women i talk with them all the time about faith and religion and we believe so many uh, Mm -hmm. similar things about god and we have great conversations we actually cross those boundaries yeah (laughs) you know we we talk about things maybe we're not supposed to talk about because it would create like you know friction here in america no they think that's the perception yeah that's Mm -hmm. the perception that's the perception 
have shouldn't a, be those barriers. No, I have a lot of time. Yeah, no, that's a that's, whole that's a whole discussion on. That is we're more alike discussion. than we are different, and I'm absolutely. sure with those discussions, you absolutely, absolutely learn that. So, mm-hmm. you you now have you know you like you said you're employing Muslim women, you're doing this entrepreneurship. What do you and, and we're in a world where everyone wants to be a CEO, and as an yeah. entrepreneur oh my myself, gosh. you know it's freaking <laughs> hard. That shit is Super not hard. easy. It's a 24 hour type of thing. Your 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 job always goes on. So what so why are the some of the cons and pros? Oh my gosh. Some days I throw out my hands and I'm like, who wants to buy these companies? <laughs> like, who wants to take these off my hands? Um, and I mean, maybe someday, but I've, I mean, so far I'm, I've just been completely set on no investor capital and I'm going to grow these things as big as I can on my own so that at the point where someday I do get an offer, it's billions of dollars. It's sure. not millions of dollars. Um, and so, you know, you have the, the con is it's just every day you have to show up, you have to be present, you have to uh, know how to, you know, correct people when they're wrong and they're not doing their job. And, and that's difficult. It's, it's a lot, um, it's a lot on, on your plate that you kind of have to navigate, um, especially being young, that can be really hard. Um, but I mean, I'd say that the advantages far outweigh the cons. I think it's interesting. You take such a, from what I know about you and I love your learning platform, you actually take accountability for what the word influencer means. Yes. And we were talking about how, like, from my generation, yeah, you saw people make a post, get $10,000, and people think it's that easy, but it's really not. But talk to let's talk about that, because I, I know you have some strong opinions. Yes. Right? Definitely I want to hear it. <laughs> so company. I've ranted to Alex off air about this before, so we'll just bring it on air, I guess. <laughs> but I work with influencers all the time. Um, my brands employ them to, you know, show off our products and make sales and um, and so influencers are a critical part of how um, businesses today function. You cannot really run effective Facebook ads or paid Snapchat ads or paid any kind of ads. Pinterest doesn't matter without first having a really great base of influencers that are promoting your product. Um, but my my problem I'm seeing with this next generation of influencers, I'd say probably under age like 30, right? Um, like 30 and younger, the ones that are constantly like active on YouTube and posting cool videos and all of that, and, like doing crazy things to get attention. Um, it's that there's like a lack of basic market economics um, going on. Like they, they don't really understand how the marketplace works and that they're posting is actually a service, right? So when they're making a post, that's actually like almost like a product I'm buying as a brand Mm -hmm. in turn to sell Mm -hmm. my product. Mm -hmm. So that comes with a price. And I think that the more attention uh, younger influencers are getting, the more they think they can just skyrocket these prices without really understanding that their, their platform has an actual worth and an actual value. Right. And if you surpass that, it's going to collapse the entire influencer kind of bubble that's growing so huge right now because brands are not going to see value. They only see value if they can make more money back off of that post than what they're paying for. Turn on investment. I So I work obviously with a lot of influencers and I'm constantly, especially when I'm just talking to some of the younger ones, not in a business setting, but just, you know, just person to person, um, discussing that with them because I don't want to see the influencer bubble burst. I love the influencer bubble. Trust me. And I want to keep paying these people. But it gets a little outrageous if you have 39,000 followers and you're asking for 10 grand or 15 grand for a single post. It's like, what's wrong with these kids yeah <laughs> she's just always what's happening business. well you know it's funny that you say that because like even myself I look at like I, I as we said when I started out my business I was doing it very you know grassroots and we had to go also I had to invest in advertisement I could not have a successful and I could not have built a multi-million dollar company right. if I did not invest in advertisement but if all of those advertisement I mean thank god for like El Clasificado and like you know, penny saver. I say that because that's where our tech, you know, we're, I had cell phone stores. So it was like, of course, mm-hmm. people were going for your Metro PCS mm-hmm. cell phone. They weren't going to like Vogue. They're like, you know, so we, but if, thank God it wasn't some outrageous because exactly, it has to, I have to, and I would even monitor how many times my customers would come in and say, well, where did you come from? Did you come from, is this returning something for me? Right. So if the influencers don't understand that, I completely, I think that it's great that you oh, actually realize that's that. That's a huge difference though, right? Because, okay, I'm going to say the old school. I'm not I'm not calling it old or anything. I'm just Thank saying. You. <laughs> okay, so like the old school way of advertising, right, is like those advertisers were, would come to you as a brand and say, hey, we can give you this many impressions or we can do this for you. The focus was on you. Right. The focus was on the brand and the service they could provide the brand. Today, 
it's almost like the ego is too involved mm-hmm. to ever say this is what I could do for you yeah. because they're the ones getting the likes. They're sure. the ones getting the attention. And so it takes a level of humility. And the best influencers I've worked with who I go back to time and time again treat their platform like a business right. and like something that will actually generate you know, significant returns for the people who do invest in them and it's not so much about oh but i got this many views or oh i got this or oh i've been seen on these you know tv networks or right it's not about them um so it's difficult you can't make your brand even if your brand is you too much about you you Mm -hmm. know what i agree that's when you blow it up i love that that lets me know i'm on the right track because even with unsugar coated media initially i was like the author and it was like more me now i'm like no we Mm -hmm. totally revamped it i'm like Look, I want to be like the Oprah in a way, in the sense of like representing, but I stories. Sure, and, yeah. But I still mm-hmm. want people to recognize the organization and what it's mm-hmm. doing, and not necessarily right. feel like it's just all about me. You know, I want to push that, like you said, that brand. So I think that's great advice. Like if for people who are listening, like write that down because that's gold to understand that. Right. Um, if you're trying to be an influencer, make it as much about the brands as possible that come to you. Um, make it all about them. You know, mm-hmm. if you have a media kit or something that you send out to them, spend less talking about, oh, you know, Sherry is a mom of two from Tennessee and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's a, that's all a great background. But, like, they know what you're about. They've seen your profile. They're clearly interested in working with you. Talk numbers to these people. Right, right. Talking numbers is talking dirty. <laughs> Lay it on, you know. Yeah, so, yes. so that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So, okay, now what do you think, and this is kind of going to be a very interesting question to a degree because – so we've talked about like the likes and we know that we know from a business perspective, those metrics are hugely important. Right. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about seeing what we, when we have the discussions about what that's doing to society, the men's set mindset, you know, because you mm-hmm. have people out there like if I'm not getting three, four hundred, a thousand likes on my picture, I'm doing something wrong mm-hmm. or my which I have to say this as a mom to, if, to the woman who's like in a house coat at her home taking care of her kids. Your life is just as amazing and worthwhile. Right. <laughs> As the chick posing in, you know, because we do, I mean, look, I'm around it being Mm -hmm. like you have the facade that's a lot. And we, and we, and even me, people one time were like, you don't take a bad picture, do you, Alia? I'm like, I do. I just burn those. Okay. Right. Don't post those. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Hashtag truth. And (laughs) you you just have to remember that like nobody's living the life that they have on their Instagrams. Like there is nobody in this world that is as happy as those pictures sure and it, it's i think it's yes it's up to you to know that i mean like if but i don't think it's bad to want to post a badass dope picture either absolutely not. and sometimes absolutely i feel like not. that's a little bit where people kind of like if you have like i don't want to just post pictures of me doing the same thing all the time like i do it tells people like you're not posting enough i'm like that's because it's not that interesting <laughs> like when right. i get to something a little bit more interesting i'll post it right like i'm just saying that's like my personal feel you know what i think it i think it's it's even bigger than the likes too, right? Because honestly, I don't care about likes. If we didn't have likes, it's going to be about comments, which I mean, they're saying Instagram is going to get rid of likes altogether, right? So it's going to be about comments then, or it's going to be about something. The thing I always say is, you know, especially for me, I have now six businesses that operate uh, primarily off of Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I'm always on Instagram. I'm on Instagram 24 seven. I'm constantly having to check myself. Am I scrolling just because it's fun (laughs) or am I scrolling because I'm working? And it's like those lines Mm -hmm. can get very blurry. But like the thing I always tell people is like stop looking at social media as a consumer and start looking at it as something that can make you mad money. When you start doing that, you'll naturally find yourself Yep. limiting not only the time you spend just browsing wasting time but you're going to you're going to find your mindset shifting mm-hmm. and it's not going to be so much comparing to other girls it's going to be like oh maybe we can collaborate right. maybe mm-hmm. we can mm-hmm. make money yep. together yep. because like yep. when i'm scrolling and i see a picture of a girl with a massive booty and girl her hair's on fleek she's looking good i'm like yes i'm reaching out to her <laughs> we're going to collaborate yeah. it's not like oh my girl god crush. my butt is so much smaller <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, oh I have my god is that face <laughs> absolutely you know, i'm not thinking about that kind of stuff I'm thinking more of like oh my gosh she's awesome perfect this is great yeah so um so that's what I like I encourage especially like younger younger girls maybe they don't know what they want to do in life or they don't if they love social media awesome use that in a great way like start start looking for ways maybe you can collaborate and you can team up with these people even if it's just for more exposure on your own page because you don't know where that can lead you exactly well I reached out like one of our upcoming guests is actually somebody I've been watching her and I love her personality personality and she's just awesome and I have total girl crush and like I said hey can you be on the show and she was like I'd love 
to and so we're you know and like you stuff like it's amazing and this is and I have to, my my 12 year old daughter told me something the other day she was like I was I was on my snapchat or something and she said and this girl who has a lot of followers um, I said I love you and you inspire me and she was telling me why she inspires her and then she goes and she liked both my comments and then she commented on both of them and she was like and it just really made me feel so good and I think that that's one thing I, I just I say to influence just know you are really touching lives so oh, take it absolutely. seriously mm -hmm. like you know to, to have that type of influence is, is a really cool thing um, I actually tell people not to undermine what I don't put all my focus into Instagram personally simply because as an author like that's but I will say this my first book I was a virtual it was my first book because of Instagram I sold my book in seven different countries just through Instagram just because of I mean and because of that I can say I'm an internationally known author thanks to thanks to having that as a tool thanks so I'm not Instagram. mad at yeah. it I definitely you know as a businesswoman mm -hmm. I want to leverage but I'm also thankful that it allows me to make some amazing connections with some amazing people absolutely we became connected as a result of it and I was like is she going to talk to me because she has that many followers and she did and I was like <laughs> that's so cool you're so amazing I did talk to her because I'm a nice person <laughs> she, is. she is yeah She's the best. So, so what um what is like your you know like what's your what's your number one like if you're going to try and brand yourself or brand your business, what's your, like, okay, your top five, don't do this? Oh, my gosh. Top five or things not to three. do. Top three. Top three. Top three. Okay. Um, well, we'll see where this goes. There's a lot of <laughs> things not to do. Um, I would say the first thing not to do, um, if we're specifically just talking about e-commerce, say you have someone who just wants to get into this for the first time, they want to sell a product online, um, people – spend so much time and energy hopping from product to product because they're scared that maybe one isn't trendy enough or one isn't going to last or maybe there's not enough interest or whatever it is and I always tell my students I have I have a mentorship program where I bring people on and I kind of walk them through this process and I tell them is like look you should be able to sell anything to anyone it doesn't matter what the product is it's all entirely about the marketing right and it's about your collaboration so stop stressing if you can't get started because you're scared about what product you're choosing or you're just like oh the idea hasn't just hit me yet I don't know stop worrying about that it could be something as simple as a bracelet it could be something as fancy as a freaking I don't know some brand new gadget that like listens in on your neighbor's conversations I don't know whatever it is sure. you know it could be something crazy it doesn't matter it just matters that you get started and so um yeah taking that's how long is, that's how is there's bad. businesses where they make millions of dollars selling scrunchies right yes you're like yes. oh really a scrunchie Which, by the way I knew it was gonna come back I kid you not. I knew See, a lot. I knew, I knew that. I knew best. that the fanny pack was coming back. Oh my god! Because we were in Europe, and I saw some people, and I said, "Watch by next year, honey." I was like, "Go, let's go, let's stop by, you know, Fendi or whatever, and buy you a little fanny pack." He's like, "No, I'm not going to do it." And I was like, and, he, and I go, "It's going to hit the United States," and he was like, "No, it's not." I go, "Just yes, you'll right. see." And then within a year, wait. and it happened. And then I said the same thing about scrunchies. That what about so what about what's your number two? Um, number two, I would say that number two is, um, again, along the same product line, talking about products, um, a, a lot of times what people will do is they'll import a ton of different products into their store, um, especially people who are like trying this whole drop shipping trend, right? Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know what drop shipping is, that's essentially where you're kind of the middleman. Like you'll pick a very basic product from China mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'll sell it on your website as if it's your own. Mm -hmm. And then the people in China will ship it to your customer. I say don't do this. Don't do this. Maybe drop test if you're trying to like test the product for a week or something, but don't drop ship. It's just a bad model. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people will they'll import a ton of these random Chinese products into their store thinking that, okay, well, we'll just test it out until we see which one works. And then at the end of the day, it's like your store just looks like ridiculous. You right. have no branding. It's just a bunch of random stuff. No one knows what's going on. So I say don't do that either. Right. That's that's really bad. And the drop shipping can just give you a really bad reputation. So don't be scammy. <laughs> just be normal and get started. Yeah, I will say uh, I having that. a ton of that. inventory is a danger. You know, especially when you're starting out. Like you want to have, you got to figure out who your market is, what sells, and then you know. Right. Although, and as consumers, you do you walk into a store if it's too much, you're like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Let me just walk back out. That's me. At right. Least. That's yeah, the yeah, type yeah, of yeah, I am. Yeah. Right. Like right. you know, um, what's your third? 
I would say don't over invest in the beginning. Um, I see mm-hmm. a lot of people that are dreamers, right? Who are like, I'm an entrepreneur. No, you're a wannabe entrepreneur. Right. I, you know, like <laughs> saying you're an entrepreneur, but that's only because you're throwing massive amounts Definitely. of money right. on, at an idea that you haven't tested and really haven't worked through the marketing side of things. Again, you're not trying to test products so much, you're trying to test marketing. Um, and so if you're throwing a lot of money into your marketing when you haven't tested anything and you really don't know what's gonna stick with your demographic, it's a huge waste of time. So start very small. I like to say maybe try like one influencer collaboration that's really on the cheap end. Okay, a really small page and see if you make a sale. Okay, and if you do, maybe try that influencer again the next week, but with some really interesting wording in the caption or a deeper sure. discount or something and see if you can get those sales up and then graduate to the next level. But don't just like spend your whole life mm-hmm. savings sure. on an idea that you don't know is going to work. Yeah, work. Don't yeah, be dumb. Yeah, yeah. That's My advice don't is don't be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> don't gamble. Save yeah. your money. Don't gamble on your kids' uh, so, uh, college money. Yes. <laughs> oh don't. my gosh. Imagine. <laughs> There's plenty of them out there, believe me. So, so it seems, it seems I'm getting a sense that you're very successful. Thank you. So thank you. So you're welcome. <laughs> so now, how do you deal more in your personal life, right? Like when you're trying to date boys, a boys. Like yeah. it does it. It does. And I and I bring this up because I have heard women have mm-hmm. a really huge problem with this. But what is your take on making more than your partner? So I think it's awesome. I think you should always try to make more than your partner. And I'm a super competitive person. So and now everyone listening to this, all the men are going to be like, okay, we're going to block her. Sure yeah. No, but I think that that's actually, I think it's completely fine. I think if there's someone who is honestly intimidated by that, he's not for you. But there's also something to be said to not be that obnoxious bitch that's like, you know, says on her dating profile, like, trying to build an empire and trying to, you know, don't, no. Like, right. just be normal. It doesn't need to be a defining factor about There's you so many that you want to be successful. Right. Like, if you're so confident, girl, that you can be successful without a man, why right. do you need the man to know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I just kind of think people need to dial it back a little bit. But I mean, about it all the time. <laughs> is that is that something that has crossed your mind before? Like, the like the feeling of, of that? Definitely. I think for any woman, honestly. Well, let me ask, we, do you have a boyfriend right now? Sorry. No, okay. I don't have a boyfriend right or, now. I'm sorry. dating. dating. Um, <laughs> but I do think, like, we've been raised in a culture where it is kind of like, you know, you're taught that men can be easily intimidated, which honestly says more about the poor man, My husband right? would that love for me to be easily. his sugar mama, okay? Right? He loves me. <laughs> he's I'm like, saying. I would gladly stay home, we need Alia, more men and like you that. just make everything. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I but yeah. it, it it doesn't have. But um, what I'm trying to get at is, how does y- that make you feel? Does it th- does it make you feel like, like, you don't see him the same? Or I think on a certain on a certain level, not to be materialistic or shallow, but on a certain level, you should be attracting people who are on your level, because if you are dating someone who really doesn't even have the ambition to be where you're at. Um, I feel like, you know, no relationship can flourish without respect. And that's respect needs to be both ways. So he can respect the hell out of me. But if I don't respect him, this thing ain't going anywhere. right? Exactly. So especially I feel like as a woman, you need to know, oh, that's my man. He gets things done. You know, he's like he's about it. And he's he's equally as passionate. It doesn't have to be the same thing as me. But he's equally as passionate about whatever he's into. I think that that is really important. That absolutely. Um, Well, especially if you're an ambitious woman. Mm, Yes. You know, it'll catch up if it'll come out in the relationship, you know, for women who are like, it's okay. I can just take care of him, and he can just sit on the couch and play video games all day long. I love him. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. Flash like, forward oh. three years, you're gonna be like, listen, man, get up off the couch. And get to <laughs> right. Hey, you know? what's up? And that's, you know, but people kind of can judge that, I guess, or be like, oh, so you're not interested in dating men who are, you know, like doing something lazy like, or like <laughs> no, blue collar <laughs> jobs or whatever. And it's like, no, no that's not. That's, that's not, not what, what we said. It's about at all. <laughs> that's not what it's about at all. I don't. Yeah. Care. You can be working at McDonald's for all I care, as long as you're working on your side hustle just as hard. Yeah, you because know? then you could grow up to own mm-hmm. the McDonald's. Donald's chain, yeah. like to be and honest, I, I right. care about more like who a person is at the end of the day. Their Absolutely, character, of course, all of those things. But yeah, if you're if you're just skating by, that's not going to work for Lauren. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, good to know. Good to know. All the gentlemen out there put on nose, and she never said that she did, you couldn't make more ne- more money than her. She just said that it's okay if she makes more money than oh, you. I mean, hey, I would be happy if he made yeah, more money. Yeah, right. Than me. That would be awesome. <laughs> what is it? Um, why spend mine when I can spend yours? Exactly. <laughs> 
If he wants hey, to work harder or, and make more um, money, that's, um, <laughs> please. That's but you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm married, and I still go out. Like, my husband and I will go out, and I will still, like, fight with him sometimes for the check. I yes. will still surprise him, make sure, get the mm-hmm. waiter, no, let me take care of this. And I'll just, because I always want him to know that I feel like I want to take care of him, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it when you take care of me, baby, but I also like to take care of you. And I think that in a relationship, that can be very healthy. For a man, it can make you feel like, because there are some men who are just like, well, I do everything, I pay for everything, and then it gets in their head, right? But right. if you actually show, you know what, I love you and I appreciate that you do things, but guess what, I can do things, too. There's a little bit more, I feel like you have a better chance of respect within the relationship. Right. Right? Yeah. There's less resentment. I feel like how can you not resent someone who's always taking, taking, and not giving? Yeah. And so also, let's be smart that. about this. So, like, if you go to Mastro's, he can pay. But, like, if you go to Chili's, you can't pay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, no. Exactly. No, I thought, <laughs> you got to be smart no. about this, okay? No, no, no. I know, right? No, there have been times when I know I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay for dinner. And then, like, I'll see my husband eye in the wine list. And my husband likes expensive wine. Yeah. So do I. So do I. But I'll just be like, dang, this is going to be expensive tonight. <laughs> All right. I hope I get some later. I'm full start pulling that <laughs> Where's my? My, my where's my reimbursement for this? He's like, I'll pay you better put out that Cracker Barrel, but I'm not for this take dinner, yeah. um, all right. So we got some rapid fire questions. Are for you ready? You. All right. I'm you okay. have to actually answer. Do you have to have her? Do I have. I, I, ha- I'm I have scared. Some. You guys are psyching this up. <laughs> no, no, no. The key is answer them as fast as you can. Because okay. You know. Okay. All right. Best song title that describes your love life. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have any. I, no, don't she's like, like that. <laughs> no, she's she like, has I'm a very go interesting life. <laughs> I'll tell you. I I don't even know how to answer that. I don't even listen to enough music. <laughs> okay, that's so bad. Fashion trend you don't understand. The fanny packs. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Thank you. I'm so glad you didn't say that. Weirdest thing you have done to make money. Weirdest thing. <laughs> um, scrub toilets. Yeah, I've done that. That's not weird, but okay. Oh, it's probably the worst. <laughs> that is the least, least fun. <laughs> least fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, what would be your pickup line if you were a guy? <laughs> if I were a guy? I don't know. I'm not creative enough for these questions. You can do it. I, I think I would just like a wink and then, <laughs> <laughs> then wait for them to come over to me because I'm that lazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's called confidence, actually. There we go. You know, it's so funny. Yeah. I used to laugh. Okay, you got one more for her, yeah? Oh, okay. Would you rather be in 90 Day Fiance or The Bachelor? Girl. I say this because she loves The Bachelor. Girl. Only if it's mm. Tyler season. If it's Tyler season, The Bachelor, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to find me an Italian man and we're doing 90 Day Fiance all the way. <laughs> You know, them Italian guys, they like their, their <laughs> American women. There we go. Yeah. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's so <laughs> <annoying>. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What's your biggest piece of advice to, um, you know, the young woman wanting to be an entrepreneur today? Mm-hmm. I'd say that there is no mold that you can't break. There's so many expectations we put on ourselves as women. So many things that we feel, like, pressured to do. And even society pressures both genders you know like oh yeah. well, you have to go to college and you have to do this and you have to like there's such a path that we're raised to follow mm-hmm. and i would just say that there there isn't there really isn't sure. um it's a new era and you can do whatever you want to do just as long as you really go after it wholeheartedly and you are actually taking steps it's action it's not thoughts it's not wishes it's not dreams as long as you're taking action you can do it Amen. I love that. Well, yeah. thank you so much Amen. for joining us today. Of You're course. Been fantastic. I can't wait. Um, for people who actually want to reach out to you and learn more about your platform and your l- online learning, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram. My handle is laurenlee.official, or they can go on www.moneybunny.co, and they can hop on the learning platform there and that kind of has like a 30 day course. So every day is kind of like a shorter video. So it's easy and people can just kind of like learn how to build their own store from the ground up and get started. Yay. I love it. That's awesome. Well, you know what? Um, Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lauren. For people who want to reach out to me, Alia, A-A-L-I-A underscore unsugarcoated on um, IG, or you can go to our website and uh, www.unsugarcoatedmedia.com. And if you want to drop a really nice hello, you can send me a message or reach me at Alexandra Cheka on Instagram with two X. 
Because <laughs> she's double X. Because I'm a double X. <laughs> that kind of sounds naughty. I don't know. Anyway. I know. Way to end I it. like okay. it. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting us be unsugarcoated. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Unsugarcoated Podcast with your hosts, Ali Alanius and Alexandra Cheka. 